The most overrated movie on the planet just got a sequel with Joker, Folé a Doux. Or as I would like to call it, Folé a Poo. Director Todd Phillips returns to helm this project, and this time he takes things in a slightly different direction. One that general audiences might not be thrilled with, but he might pull in those art house purists. Let's talk about Joker 2 in a spoiler free review. <laughs> If you find yourself enjoying my commentary, feel free to subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell, and even like this video. That tells YouTube you want to see more of me in the future. It's, it's wild what we can do with technology. I think I speak for everyone, yeah, that's fair. That a sequel starring the Joker and Harley Quinn should be based around a musical courtroom drama. Everybody wanted this! And thankfully, Todd Phillips had his ear on the streets. He was listening to the common peasant, and he gave us exactly what we wanted. I'm hoping the sarcasm that I'm putting out there is being picked up. Because Joker, filet of fish is not a conventional sequel. In fact, it's so unconventional, it's probably going to turn most people off like it did myself. Now, I'd like to put all the cards on the table. I like the first Joker movie. I did not love it. I thought it was incredibly overrated. To me, it felt like a, a solid drama character study that I was not really expecting or wanting from the Joker. When you think of the Clown Prince, you think of shenanigans, you think of antics, you think of psychotic behavior with a tinge of humor thrown in the mix. But that's not what we get with Arthur Fleck in either of these films. In fact, it's even more removed in the sequel. This film, 95% of the time, takes place in two locations, the prison and the courtroom. And we're gonna be spending a lot of that time in Arthur's psyche again. He's having visions of grandeur. He's experiencing life anew through the Joker again because he's fallen in love. And at the end of the day, that's what the story's about. It's a love story. Lady Gaga's in this, she's playing Lee not Harley Quinn. I think they say that name once, but she's referred to as Lee and that's fine because she's not Harley Quinn and he's not the Joker. These are other worlds characters that don't have any similarities with what we know and love. I'm not a fan of this deconstruction of characters. I feel like you've removed the entire essence of what they are and instead now we're looking at two completely different people. That's not fun or appealing to me. I'm just watching Arthur Fleck do cosplay. If you want to go further into this character study, his psychology, his schizophrenic behavior, the possibility of multiple personalities, although we already knew from the first that's not what was going on. And so all this movie is basically a long retread. This is R-rated, it's over two hours long, and you feel the hell out of it. It never ends. This movie just keeps going. And it does have a lot of musical moments, and the big problem with them and I have no problem with musicals. I love Grease, I love La La Land. I think La La Land's a brilliant movie. The problem here is most musicals continue the story as they're singing. This one doesn't really do that. It's emotion that's conveyed through the songs, not so much what they're singing about, but how they're feeling about it. And the big issue with this is it undercuts every single great moment this movie's building towards. Whenever something amazing's about to happen, or you're invested in a certain scene play out, boom, we cut to Arthur imagining himself singing with Gaga again. It's disappointing, and it ruins any sort of tension or excitement that you might have had going in. Now, I am keeping this intentionally vague because I don't want to ruin things for people that are excited about this film, and absolutely see it and make up your own mind. I, as someone that liked the Joker, didn't love it by any means, and certainly didn't need to see more of it, already was going into this one kind of like, uh, what are we gonna do? What are you gonna bring new to the table? But if you love the first film, you got an open mind about it, you might get won over by the like lack of story and more the style that they bring. I will have a spoiler review in a couple days. So again, maybe think about subbing if you want to hear those thoughts. From a superficial standpoint, everything looks beautiful. This is a gorgeous looking film, top to bottom, cinematic quality on full effect here. The musical numbers, while not pushing the story very much, are all right. The songs themselves are fine on occasion. <laughs> Another, here's the issue. You have an amazing singer. Lady Gaga's fantastic. And you are telling her to cripple your own voice. 
Because she's not Lady Gaga in the film, she's Lee. She's not supposed to be an amazing singer in the film, so Lady Gaga has to ruin her own voice by cracking it, by singing out of tune. And I would say half of the songs between her and Joaquin Phoenix are this way. They're off pitch, they're off key, it's intentionally done, but that doesn't make it sound any better. And then when we go into full on fantasy mode is when she finally gets to use those pipes. And they're, they're good songs. But again, when it comes to musicals, you expect these larger than life, huge scale moments where there's dancers all over the place, there's colorful settings, and Joker doesn't really do that. There's a couple of them that kind of go that route, but we're still keeping a very stock camera shot. We're not really playing, we're not really going too wild with any of these visions. And so what does it really bring to the overall narrative? Well, in the first film, Arthur conveys himself through dance. He does have music, he's constantly doing his little stupid thing, shutting his eyes with his cigarette. Thankfully, that's gone in this one for the most part, but it is unfortunately replaced with a lot of songs. I already said this, I didn't think this needed a sequel, I didn't really want one, but if they were gonna do another one, I thought, and I think most did, that they would kind of lay into the Joker aspect more, maybe even push Arthur aside and instead focus on one of the Jokers that rises up from his mob. But instead, Phillips opts to retread the same story for the most part. Nothing new is learned about this character. We're just inching forward in time. Joaquin and Gaga have chemistry. They put in a good performance. I'm just not interested in the story. And again, the music doesn't elevate the material. It actually hurts it. To end on more of a positive note, again, the visuals really are stunning. And I know that's like, who cares if the story and stuff isn't working. I don't care how pretty it looks, but it does pull you in at least, even if you're not really invested in what's happening, there's enough to look at. It's pretty enough to kind of keep you along for the ride. I still wouldn't recommend wasting your time if you weren't a fan of the first. I can't imagine even a part of you would want to see this, but if you loved the first movie or you're like me and you liked it enough and you could see the second one potentially pulling you in, definitely give it a shot and think for yourself. I, however, no, that this is a pass. This is a hard pass. I'll never watch this again. And I think it only was made because the original did so freaking well at the box office. Phillips didn't have a choice. He had to make another one kind of coming off as a cash grab. And by cash grab, I mean, he clearly didn't have much of a story to tell and he maybe wanted to try his hand at a musical, different stylized film. So he just leveraged the name to do what he wanted to do and not so much what audiences would want to see. All right, there you go, my thoughts on Joker 2. He's not Joker, he's just a dude that is cosplaying as him and, and doing it very poorly, mind you. Let me know your thoughts below. Please, again, subscribe, like the video, share, notification bell, all that stuff that keeps you invested in my channel. I would appreciate it. And if you really like what I'm doing, maybe think about becoming a patron at patreon.com slash adamdoesmovies. I just reevaluated it, added a bunch of new offerings, and I think there's a lot of great stuff there, especially if you're a $5 member or higher. There's exclusive videos every month. I brought back a favorite of mine called The Cringe, which is a satirical show. I play a stupid character. It's a very fun time. You get one of those every single month. Would love to have you on board. All right, hopefully I see you next time. Take care.